Okay, good afternoon and everyone welcome to the uh, Emergency Medical Care Advisory Board meeting of November 9th. Uh, first order of business is call to order and um, our flag salute. Do we have? Yeah, Oral, would, would you uh, lead us in the flag salute, please? Pleasure. Oral. Okay. I salute, pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Mr. Ferris, would you please uh, take the roll? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to turn over the roll call to my EMS coordinator, Chris Parks. Thank you. Roger Carr. Here. Dr. Lyon. Here. Chairman Flores. Here. Sheriff Youngblood. Here. Leslie Wilmer. Here. Chief Alberson. Here. Tyler Whitesill. Scott Hilbert. John Surface. Okay, thank you. We have a quorum. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ferris. Okay, that leads us to item number four, consent agenda. Um, all items with a C are considered by division staff to be routine and uncontroversial. Consent items may be considered first and approved in one motion if a member of a board of law or the audience wishes to comment or discuss an item. If comment or discussion is desired, the item will be removed from consent and heard in its listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the board concerning the item before action is taken. And consent agenda items include items A through E on number 10. Is there any member of the public or anyone from the board wishing to discuss any of the consent agenda items? Now is the time. Okay, seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board for action. Motion on, on consent. Second. Okay, thank you. We have a motion and second. Um, please cast your vote, or well, you. For, for, I'm just saying, please cast your vote. Uh, you take a poll of our of our votes, please. I'll turn that over to Mr. Parks. Orchard Cryer? Yes. Dr. Lyon? Yes. Chairman Flores? Yes. Sheriff Youngblood? Yes. Leslie Wilmer? Yes. Chief Alperson? Yes. All eyes, motion passes. Okay, great, thank you. That brings us to item five, approval of the minutes. I believe that was in the consent. Okay, all right, thank you. That brings us to item six, um, subcommittee reports, APOT task force. Mr. Uh, Ferris, would you please uh, lead us in the presentation? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The last APOT task force meeting was held on October 26, 2023, and uh, the the majority of that meeting was taken up with me um, going over um, AB 40. AB 40 uh, just was signed into law on October 13th by the governor. And what it does is um, creates additions to health and safety code section 1797.120. It adds sections, subsections five, six, and seven. And I'm gonna just give you a brief overview of what that means. And so under subsection five, the new subsection created, it instructs emergency medical services authority uh, to develop an electronic signature for arrival and handoff to patients at hospitals, develop an audit tool to improve data accuracy, provide technical assistance and funding as needed subject to appropriation for small rural hospitals, and to adopt emergency regulations in order to implement uh, this uh, new change. It also instructs local EMS agencies to develop a standard not to exceed 30 minutes, 90% of the time for patient offload. Um, and it provides how that can be attained. 
Under 1797.120.6, it states that hospitals shall develop an ambulance patient offload time reduction protocol that will address notification of hospitals administration, nursing staff, medical staff, ancillary services when the local EMS agency offload time standards have been exceeded by one month. Mechanisms to improve hospital operations to reduce ambulance patient offload time which include activating hospital surge plans, transferring patients, suspending elective admissions, discharging patients, using alternative care sites in, uh, and increasing supplies, improving triage and transfer systems, and adding staff. Systems to improve general hospital coordination with the ER and direct operational changes designed to facilitate a rapid reduction in ambulance patient offload time to meet the LEMSA or the local EMS agency standard and they need to file their ambulance patient offload time reduction protocol with the authority at the state level and report any revisions annually. And then finally under 120.7, it states that the authority shall monitor monthly ambulance patient offload time data for each hospital that's required to report under this section. If hospital has an APOT that exceeds the local EMS agency standard, then EMSA, the state authority, will report the APOT time exceedance to the local EMSA and the Commission on EMS. It will direct the LIMSA to alert all EMS providers in that jurisdiction and direct the hospital to implement their APOT time reduction protocol. And finally, EMSA will have to host a minimum of biweekly telephone calls with the hospital administration, ER leadership, EMS providers, and the LIMSA to discuss implementation of the protocol and the outcomes. One of the things I did in this meeting also was going back to quarter three, I broke down what it would look like if we followed uh, the 30%, the 30 minutes at 90% of the time and um, not a single one of our hospitals can come anywhere close to that threshold. They're operating, they're offloading at greater than 30 minutes, 72% of the time, 65% of the time, 48% of the time, and so on. So we have a lot of work to do um, here locally to get the hospitals. These, these numbers should be at 10% in order for them to meet this, this law. So we have a lot of work to do. Um, also, the final thing that I discussed at this meeting was uh, that EMS, ha in an attempt to assist the hospitals, again, uh, with patient offload times, has begun a trial study of something we're calling redirect. Um, it was implemented in late September, and what there's two separate alert notifications that are built into redirect. Alert one is if a hospital has patients waiting to offload for greater than 30 minutes that equal 10% of their licensed bed capacity, then EMS labels that facility at alert one. At alert one, ambulance providers are notified of the alert status and they are instructed, they are requested that the facility is being impacted or compacted with patients and it's recommended at that point that they try to avoid that hospital. Alert two is if a hospital has patients waiting to offload for greater than 30 minutes that equal 20% of their licensed bed capacity. EMS labels that facility at alert two and they go on what's called redirect. Ambulance providers are notified that the hospital is inundated with patients and they should not transport to that hospital. This hospital is now on redirect for one hour to give the hospital time to decompress. So no more than two hospitals can be on redirect at any given point in time. Uh, if redirect begins to have a negative effect on other hospitals, it will be revoked immediately and all hospitals will be reopened. Hospitals may not request redirect. The decision is made solely by EMS staff based on the data that we have monitoring each hospital. And while a hospital is on redirect, EMS will continuously monitor the system for possible negative impact on other hospitals. 
In the first full month of the redirect trial, the data showed a decrease in APOT times by 500 hours. Uh, moving into the second month, we saw a slight increase of that by about 200 hours, but still 300 hours below that previous month. So it appears to be having an effect. We have one more month to go on our trial. Uh, in the meantime, I have ReadyNet uh, systems working on uh, creating an automated alert system that will do this for us automatically. That concludes my report, and I'm available to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Ferris. Any comments or questions from our board for staff? All right, thank you. Usually, I don't welcome a lot of direction from Sacramento, but this time I do. Sounds good. Um, okay, that brings us to uh, item seven, public comment. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the board on any matter, not on the agenda, but over which the board has jurisdiction. Members of the public also have the opportunity to comment as agenda items are discussed. Are there any public comments? Now is the time. Okay, seeing none, we'll move on the agenda. Uh, there's no business under eight or nine. Brings us to um, item 11, manager's report. Uh, Mr. Ferris, you're on deck again. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. EMS continues to remain busy with improvements to the system, conducting quality improvement reviews, providing training to the public, continually reviewing policies, procedures, and protocols, and many other projects. Our training team has conducted three Narcan trainings, six Stop the Bleed trainings, and three hands-only CPR trainings in the last quarter. A total of 270 people have attended these trainings and, and, and been educated in these courses. Our certification team has completed 1,576 certifications and accreditations since January. This includes EMTs, paramedics, emergency medical dispatchers, and mobile intensive care nurses. And our emergency preparedness team has been working on restructuring the healthcare coalition to be more beneficial to our medical health providers. Stocking and organizing the warehouse with supplies in the event of another disaster. Working on the procurement of a mobile command trailer for the purpose of providing administrative control at the scene of large scale events. And they conducted a uh, countywide drill for a chemical surge incident recently, and finally attended the State Emergency Medical Services Authority, United States Navy, and California Department of Public Health sponsored full scale exercise at Point Magoo uh, and numerous other projects that would take all afternoon for me to mention. One project that we, uh, that public health and EMS are very proud of is the Vial of Life project. On October 19th, Kern County Public Health and EMS, along with Hall Ambulance Service and Liberty Ambulance Service, held a press conference announcing the Vial of Life project. Now, this is a Vial of Life. You all have one sitting in front of you, okay? Inside the Vial of Life, if I can open it. Okay, is a magnet, put that on your refrigerator door. It also has a sticker that goes close to your front door. And then there's a form inside that you fill out that has all of your medical history, medications, allergies, everything. In the event that you become incapacitated, cannot respond, this can save your life because this will have all the information that the crews need in order to save your life without having to try and figure it out themselves. So all this information, it will be handy. You put this on the top shelf of your freezer, inside your freezer, they, they will know to look there when they see the sticker and the magnet. So following the press conference on the 19th, public health received a huge response from the public and have had to order more vials of life in order to meet the demand that we have seen. In the days immediately following the press conference, public health distributed 1,800 vials just to those individuals that walked into public health asking for them. In addition, we distributed bulk vials to Liberty Ambulance, Hall Ambulance, Aging and Adult Services, the VFW Post in Fraser Park, Kern City, Brighton Parks, 
and Cain Memorial. And at this point, if anyone listening to this or watching this wants a vial of life, come down to Public Health at 1800 Mount Vernon, and we will be happy to, to give you a vial of life uh, so that you can get your life saved. Um, moving on, as approved by this board on June 1st, EMS initiated the downgrade of 88 emergency medical dispatch codes from lights and sirens to no lights and sirens. From June 1st through October 31st, we saw 16,431 responses to these 88 downgraded calls with 359 or 2.18% transported to the hospital with lights and sirens. Each of these 359 transports was investigated by EMS staff and we have found no evidence that the downgraded response played any role in any patient outcome. Furthermore, ambulance response times to these incidents have averaged 10.7 minutes with a 90 percentile response time of 15.39 minutes. Now, with the response time compliance for these calls at 15.59 minutes, these response times are outstanding. I am happy to announce that Kern County Fire has entered into an agreement with Public Health EMS to expand their advanced life support paramedic program in several of the unincorporated areas of Kern County. They are adding emergency medical response squads with non-firefighter paramedics and EMTs for the sole purpose of responding to 911 medical emergencies. We are hoping that this increase in paramedic response vehicles in our system will work to help assure that paramedics are available for those patients that truly need ALS interventions. These medical response squads will work exactly like fly cars being operated by Hall Ambulance Service. And lastly, I wanted to give this board an update on our membership. Um, <laughs> over the past week, we've had three resignations from MCAB. Um, Dr. Kansen and Dr. Gor Goraya uh, have resigned and Chief Well submitted his resignation. Now we have received a nomination from the county, uh, from Fire Chiefs Association of Kern County for Deputy Chief Kane Linville to fill the member seat that was left by Chief Wells, and that will be going through the Board of Supervisors for approval as soon as possible. With that, that concludes my manager's report, and I'm available to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Ferris. Any comments or questions from our board? For 17 years, I didn't know resignation was an option. <laughs> <laughs> It's not for you, sir. <laughs> not for you. Evidently. Not for you. Okay, thank you. Thanks for that report. Okay, nothing under item 12. Moving on to um, 13. Any announcements or reports from our board? Okay, seeing none. Okay, that brings us to announcements. I have two to read. Um, next regularly scheduled meeting of our board is February 8th, 2024 at 4 p.m. here in, in the board chambers. Also, um, item B, the deadline for submitting public requests uh, on the next MCAT meeting agenda is Thursday, January 25th, 5 p.m. and uh, to the Kern County EMS Program Manager. So at this time, um, that brings us to adjournment. That was quick, nice, and short. Um, I'll just ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion. Okay, motion. Okay, second. Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you.